Albright just going to do a video further refuting Calvinism, showing the power of alternative choice and contrary choice, and examples of that in scripture, and how it refutes the Calvinistic denial of free will. So let's get right into the scriptures. First of all, in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15 to 16, the Israelites are told to choose who they will serve, and they themselves made the choice to serve God. This alone shows that people have the choice to obey God or not. And it goes right in the face of the Calvinist doctrine of the just complete uh, sovereignty of God and, and there's no free will in the life of the individual human. Okay, because there is there is a sense of a sovereignty of God. I, I've covered that in other videos, but the way the Calvinists the Calvinists pervert the sovereignty of God. Joshua chapter twenty four, verse fifteen to sixteen. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. So notice something right there. Uh, if man has no free will to obey or disobey God, there would be no reason to give the Israelites two alternative choices, to either obey God or follow the false gods of the Amorites. You know, you have, the, you have the choice, the power of contrary choice there. Next scripture is in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, we see another example of alternative choices being given. The Israelites were given the choice to either follow God or follow Baal. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21 says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long how that how ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. So he's, again, he's telling them, he's giving them a choice. Again, if man has no free will, there would be no reason to mention these two alternative choices and having to ask the Israelites who they intend on serving. And even further proof of this, of the, alter the power of alternative choice, which proves free will, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 through 20, God lays out two alternative choices and is trying to persuade the Israelites to choose life over death. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 through 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 to 20. I call heaven and earth record this day against you, uh, that I have set before you life and death, cursing and blessing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of his days, the length of thy days, and that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers Abraham, to, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So he's having to persuade them. Uh, there would be no reason for God to have to persuade the Israelites to choose life if man has no free will. And another example of this is in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28, God also gave alternative choices to obey his commandments or disobey his commandments to the children of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28. And again, this flies right in the face of the Calvinistic doctrine of just the, the, the uh, denial of free will. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28. Before I have set, I, sorry, behold, I have set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. He's telling them, he's given them these two alternative choices. Uh, the children of Israel would get a blessing if they obeyed God. Notice that conditional clause there. But the if shows the children of Israel how they make the uh, decision to obey God or follow the false gods of the land around them. We clearly see that these examples of alternative choice so shows that the Israelites had the ability to choose one of the two options. The Israelites had the ability to exercise choice over whether to obey God or disobey God or to serve God or serve Baal. They had the, the ability to exercise their own free will. So that, that flies right in the face of the Calvinistic doctrine of the complete sovereignty of God. And again, sovereignty, even though that word does not appear in scripture, there is a scriptural sense of God controlling, God having control over his creation. But the Calvinists pervert that and turn you into some kind of robot that just can't decide for himself, apparently. And you get into the hyper-Calvinist section where they, they go even further with that. you got like the Westboro Baptists and some of these other guys who take it to the extreme that even other Calvinists would say are too far. So... I want to point that out. The Calvinistic doctrine, the Calvinistic perverting of the sovereignty of God is uh, thoroughly refuted by the power of contrary choice and power of alternative choice 
as shown in these examples with the children of Israel. So don't, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Also, I forgot to mention it in this video as well. If you support our content, if you like what we do, if you appreciate and want to support us, basically, then feel free to PayPal us at FaithfulServant1611. The link will be in the description. So, yeah, thank you for watching. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Goodbye. Thank you.